Hello and welcome to our worship, which this week is hosted by Emmanuel Church, Ilfracu. Our doors have been open and we have been able to enjoy some Sunday worship and fellowship together. But now with the latest restrictions, we are back into a lockdown situation. So sit back and enjoy our digital worship. Of all time, you made time and you entered time to be with us. We move from the ordinary time to extraordinary time. And in all this, we wait for you. Keep our hearts aflame with the things that please you. Mercy, humility, justice. And as we turn to worship you, we worship you in time, in spirit and in truth. Amen. I've gone for the older, more traditional hymns this time. And our first hymn is purported to come from the 8th century Ireland. Be thou my vision. Let us pray. We gather here at the end of one week and the beginning of another. O Lord of decades and days, centuries and seconds, we stop now for this moment and turn together to you, who holds all time in your hand. Make us ready to receive you as we gather here today. Amen. Turning towards you, O God, we also turn towards ourselves. We think of what we bring and what we don't. And we know that even though you call us to be ready, 
you also support us in bringing the little we have, whether we feel ready or not. O God of readiness, ready us as we pray. Amen. You call us to a life of mercy, justice and humility. But we do not always live like this. You call us to a life of welcome, but we do not always welcome. You call us to a life of solidarity, but we do not always offer a helping hand. Have mercy on us, O God, for the times we have failed, and for the times we have failed to care, for your name's sake and your mercy's sake. Amen. And dear Lord, we give you our thanks and our praise that through your Son, Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Where there is a table, you are always ready to make room. Where there is a home, you are always ready to welcome. Where there is thirst, you are always ready to quench. Where there is hunger, you are always ready to share. O oh God, who breaks bread for all, and who broke your body to show us the way, we praise you for your unending readiness to welcome. Amen. Our first reading is selected verses from Psalm 90. And please feel free to join in with the words in the bold tongue. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before, Before the, the mountains, mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by the evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have, have set, set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the little known prophet Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 7, and then verses 12 to 18. Be silent before the Sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord would do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth will be plundered, their houses demolished. Though they build houses, they will not live in them. Though they plant vineyards, they will not drink the wine. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. I will bring such distress on all people that they will grope about like those who are blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust, and their entrails like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. 
Amen. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn comes from the 19th century, so somewhat newer than the first, but still some 200 years old. Breathe on me, breath of God. New Testament reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 11 the day of the Lord now brothers and sisters about times and dates we do not need to write to you for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly as labour pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should, should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. May God add his blessing to these words. The Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. The parable of the bags of gold. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received back five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with their interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. May God add to our understanding of these words. Our next hymn is also from the 19th century, as indeed so many of our hymns are. This one was penned by that prolific hymn writer Francis Ridley Havergal. Take my life and let it be.
The book of Zephaniah originates in the 7th century BC and it develops the prophetic traditions, especially the day of the Lord, evoked in this week's New Testament reading. This theme is rooted in temple celebrations of royal victories and here God, the King of Israel, a warrior who gives victory, invites in particular the officials and the king's sons to a sacrificial celebration of the great day of the Lord. But like Amos before him, Zephaniah re-envisions the celebration of the conquest of Israel's enemies as the time of God's judgment on itself. This reworked theme is expressed in quite shocking terms since far from feasting on sacrificed animals the guests at this coming day of the Lord will find themselves the sacrificial victims in judgment on their crimes. Zephania does later prophesy that though this terrible judgment uh, there will be a people humble and lowly the remnant of Israel Rejoicing that the King of Israel, the Lord, is in our midst. Then God himself will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. But turning to our reading from Thessalonians chapter 5. There is peace and security. And that may be a slogan associated with Roman imperial rule. But peace, as the world gives, as John puts it in John 14, 27, is always fragile. Since it, it, since it is maintained only by military might and with its threat of violence. The war rule of the Dead Sea Scrolls describes the attack of the sons of light, on the company of the sons of darkness. But here, the military imagery of protective breastplate and helmet is of defence and not attack. It affirms the Thessalonians' dignity and security as the children of light who maintain their faith, hope and love. These are the means of receiving salvation, since they are the three things that abide, as we read in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Again, the ap apocalyptic imagery, sudden destruction and labour pains, is transformed by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Now, the Thessalonians were concerned that some had died before Christ's coming. And they have been given images to encourage them. But now we have the heart of the matter. Christ's death for us and our living with him holds together all the faithful, whether we are awake or asleep. Indeed, the future resurrection realised in Jesus is becoming a reality. The prophetic day of the Lord always, always seems as being both judgment and salvation is still to come in its fullness. But it is anticipated by those who already belong to the day and keep awake as children of light and children of the day. Now let's have a quick squint at our Gospel reading. The parable of the talents is framed by the future coming of the Son of Man. And in this context, it's natural to interpret the Master as Jesus and the slaves as his disciples called to exercise present responsibility. However, the medieval shift in the meaning of talent from uh, 
a valuable silver coin to a personal endowment of skill leads us to think about the use of our own gifts. But, more probably, Matthew sees the profitable use of the coins as sharing the good news of the kingdom of heaven, the treasure of heaven, the treasure hidden in a field. But without this context, and given Jesus' concern for the poor and the challenge of the rich, it is difficult to think that Jesus himself approved the avaricious and ruthless master who condemned his slave for not practising the usury forbidden in the law. Perhaps Jesus is to be seen in the third slave, who refuses to conform to the way of the greedy world. The one who kept the treasure buried safely in a field paid the price of being thrown out, as Jesus himself was thrown out and buried. The kingdom of heaven is, like treasure, someone finds and buries to be discovered with joy by those who came to Jesus' tomb. He is not here, for he has been raised. So, what are the links between the three readings we've had this morning? Well, I think it's fair to say that these readings aim to shock. Stephania's complaint, or complacent worshippers rather, will find themselves the sacrificial victims. And Jesus himself says, some will lose everything they have. And Paul writes of destruction from which there is no escape. But, Zephania hopes in the humble few. Jesus points us to buried treasure. And Paul knows that Christ died and was buried for us. So that, awake or asleep, we may live with him. Amen. So let us pray. And again, feel free to join in with the bold type. We pray to God, who is always ready for those overtaken with demands. Give Give rest, rest, O Lord. Lord. For those overburdened with anxieties, give rest, O Lord. For those overcome with debt, give give relief, relief, O Lord. Lord. For those oppressed by powers that despise them, give give salvation, salvation, O Lord. Lord. For those in situations they cannot see a way out of, give give freedom, freedom, O Lord. Lord. For those in need of hope, give Give hope, hope, O Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. God of readiness, you are always ready to show care, especially to those who are used to feeling alone. Give us readiness, so that when we see someone who is alone, we can be quick to kindness and happy to help, because you are always quick to kindness. Amen. Jesus, you were always ready to hear the needs of those around you. You turn to those who were used to being ignored. I am sometimes ready and sometimes not. And I am sometimes ignored and sometimes not. In all these times, nurture my heart so that I may seek you and share you all around, because you are all around. Amen. Slightly more up to date for our last hymn, as it was written in the 20th century. Go forth and tell.
O God, you have made us your people. We who once were not a people, you have spread your arms wide and welcomed all. Your invitation is always open, always ready to extend and expand. Send us out now in the joy of your inclusion and with a mission of your hospitality for all. Father, Son and Spirit, you dwell in community and call us to community. Source, light and love, you welcome all. Amen.